fundamentally what would be the key areas of, of uh, I guess, biomechanics um, that we want to understand before, you know, creating your battery of tests, do you think? The key areas yeah, we want to look into. Yeah, I mean, years ago, and, and this is the first thing I did. In, in the first couple of months, I went to Aspire. Um, for, for me, the baseline when I went to Aspire was so low. I couldn't believe, you know, what they were really doing. Um, there was no sports-specific testing being done with, with athletes. So, you know, when I arrived, the first thing we did was a needs analysis. We looked at each sport that we worked with, each event group in athletics, and said, what are the characteristics of this of this sport or this event? From all aspects, holistically, biomechanics, s and psychology, nutrition, you name it. What's the work rest ratios? What's, what's the, you know, the, the physical attributes? And from that then, we, we were able to hone in on what you know, the top 10 qualities are that we're looking for. Then you create the tests that are accurate, fast, uh, preferably you can, you know, stuff you can do and get information that you can use straight away. You mentioned isokinetic testing, and now that's something that you really value yeah. for the quad hamstring. Do you mind going into a little bit more about that? What, what, uh, yeah. how that feeds um, into your decision making? What we used to do was measure eccentric quad strength and hamstring strength using Biodex or, or other Lido on various isokinetic machines. And they gave us the, the, the safest, in my opinion, the safest and most accurate data on eccentric strength of quads and hammies. When we had to move away from uh, universities for, for testing and moved into high performance centers, they didn't all have isokinetics. So this is where we started looking at how else can we get a measure of, of, of leg strength? We use a concept to dyno machine to start with. And then that led to the, the ISO squat when we use portable force plate. So that was how we'd move from uh, ISO kinetics, tried something different, reflected on it, moved to ISO squat. Is there anything like on the topic that you think would be important for, for listeners? I guess more so the coaches, practitioners that we haven't touched on. Uh, yeah, look, I, I think observations and again i apologize if this comes across as 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 being harsh but please as as an snc community can and and this comes from a biomedical point of view can you focus on mm. the, the c not just the s for sure strength has got its place and is a quality that we want to improve but for me, the real nugget is in the C. The C is where you're going to get your transfers into performances. Um, if you look at some of the world-class athletes out there, world record holders, they may not have set foot on an Olympic lifting platform. You know, so it's not just about the strength side of it. You know, you've got to look at, you know, how are they how are they building the athlete to meet the demands of their their event or their sport? What, what are they? What you're... What's the pose estimation? So a pose estimation is basically kinematically tracking movement using AI algorithms. Oh, yeah, yeah, so, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, yeah that's, there that's, are that's a couple a out there. The yeah, hmm. and you know, as I said, I'm, I'm working with the NSA tech and um it's a qatar company i've been working with them for a couple of years now trying to develop a, a a solution for movement tracking i think some of them work very well single camera uh easy to use very coach friendly and will give you some really good information but again treat it for what it is you know, if you want in sagittal plane, the angles and the angular velocities, I know that NSA tech is very favorable, very favorably with accents um, in some change in direction tasks. When building out a technical model, um, what are sort of your key principles? Like, I say, the population does it need to be population specific to the sport? Um, 
yeah, talk us talk us through that when when you're trying to build out a technical model, perhaps when there's not one in a in a specific court. Like, for example, thinking of like AFL, um, would you compare an AFL athlete sprinting mechanics to a you know a hundred meter sprinter as an scenario? Um, well, I, I think that there are principles and there are there are positions which um, influence how much speed you can generate. So acceleration wise, you know, there shouldn't be any mm-hmm. difference. You've got a question then what is a limiting factor is it the traction from the the floor through the that governs how horizontal and inclined you can go is it the fact that you're starting more semi upright rather than coming out of blocks it's probably a bit of both so you know you, you've got to you've got to look at what are the fundamental uh, mechanics around acceleration some of which is don't make sure you don't plant your foot in front of your body when you're accelerating because center mass behind the foot it's a braking effect